Hello, and welcome to the Tom Morosa. This video is going to be a little bit different than our usual. It's about a kit I'm building for the Model Railroad. I think it's a really neat kit. It has some history in our area, and I wanted to share it with you. On my Model Railroad, I model two towns, Newport, Washington, and Medellin Falls, Washington. And I wanted a depot for Newport, Washington. The real Newport, Washington has two awesome depots. Uh, one of them was originally built by the Idaho and Washington Northern and later was the Milwaukee Road Depot. And then there's also a Great Northern uh, Depot in Newport. I thought about building one of them scratch built for my layout, but they're just too big. And so I was looking around on the Great Northern Railway Historical Society's website and I found a kit for the Great Northern Standard Portable Depot. These were small depots, uh, 12 feet wide, 34 feet long, that were built back east in the shops and then transported out west on flat cars to wherever they needed to go. Was there one in Newport at one time? I don't know. Um, but, interestingly, right below our farm here in the little town of Blue Creek, they did use a Great Northern Standard Portable Depot and it was placed there in 1910. Anyway, I ordered the kit from the Historical Society and I got it, so I will show you what I got. First off is they gave give you this card and it, it shows the uh, portable depots because they had a standard and then they also had a reverse. And then they have some uh, exploded drawings here showing how things go together. Pretty good instructions, I've already looked through them. And then these are from the company that actually made the kit, HRM Laser Models. And these are just general instructions for their typical kits to go into pretty good detail. They sent some station signs. They also included this color card. And then on the back here it talks about when different uh, paint schemes were used in what years. I'm going to be going off the 1909 to 1930. Uh, yellow buff base color with uh, olive green trim so that's what I'm going to go with laser cut wood pieces so they they have the walls for both the standard and the reverse depot you got your base plate and roof sections and then this piece here has all the windows you may notice that this window right here is broken so when I got the kit it was late afternoon uh, before I even opened the bag that all these pieces came in, I noticed that it was broken. And so I sent an email right away to the Historical Society. And within a couple hours, the manufacturer, HRM Laser, uh, sent me an email and said that he just needed my address and he would get a new window in the mail. Over here, he gave two different types of shingle types. so. These are like a composite shingle and then wood shake shingles so those will have to be all cut apart and individually applied. Let's see there's also a piece of glazing uh, that came, it's already cut out. And then over here it has a chimney pipe, a very small piece, don't want to lose that. So the first step I'm going to do, and I'm going to say this is not a how to video, this is a how I done it video is think about painting some things. So I'm just using rattle cans. For my yellow buff, I'm actually gonna use Caterpillar Yellow. It doesn't look great in this light, but I think it actually does a pretty good buff color. And then I just have some green. This is a little bit brighter than an olive green, but it's paint I have on hand. And uh, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna use. A little goes a long way. So I painted uh, some of these sheets for my model here. The manufacturer does a good job of grouping like colored pieces together, meaning you just have to take a spray can and just spray the whole sheet. So I really like the way the yellow turned out, the yellow buff. That's the caterpillar yellow. Uh, the green is a little bit bright, I think. Um, Probably going to roll with it. We'll see how it looks uh, once we get it against the yellow. Well, now we have something that is three-dimensional. 
And then on my walls here, I went ahead and used a micro brush just to paint the inside edges. I have started on some trim work in the walls and I really like how it looks after it goes together. Now I've done a few laser wood kits before but this is the first time I've ever done what's called peel and stick. Turn it upside down and he does include these little jig pieces to help you line up stuff so we'll put that into the window. We will start with the inside trim. You just peel off the uh, backing paper there and then using the lines on the jig we just stick this on. Pop out our jig because we don't need that anymore at least for this window. And then the next step is to put in our glazing when I can find it because it's clear and I don't see it. What did I do with it? I'm sure Virginia will edit out all of this. Oh, there it is. Found it. So I'll go ahead and cut that out. Now I'm trying not to touch the actual glazing pieces that will go in the window because I don't want to get my fingerprints on it. I'm just going to use the tip of my knife to stab the corner there and fit it in. So the next step is to take our sash there. One of our sashes, there's actually two sashes. That's going to slide in. Like that. Then we'll take our other sash, stick that on over. I really like the depth that you get with this style of window with the multiple sashes and the trim. I think these windows look better than anything I've ever done in a plastic kit. And then finally on the outside goes our exterior trim. Wonderful. Look at that. So I have all my trim in and I think it looks amazing. You may notice this window here, I cut the mullions out of the window. I'm actually going to install the optional bay window which will go in front of it. Otherwise, the next step is to go ahead and install the walls around the base. So that's what I'm going to do next. For assembly, I'm just using tight bond wood glue. The walls are all glued on. I got them all held together with a rubber band, so now I just need to let the glue dry. It's time to work on shingling the roof. Got my two roof panels here, and what I did is I used a black Sharpie and just colored around the edge and then I took some green paint and did the edges and just on the underside of the eave. As you can see they have some nice lines already scribed into the wood. Make sure your shingles are kept nice and straight. I've got most of one roof shingled here and I am really impressed with how it turned out. When you look at just the sheet of shingles it's pretty unimpressive. You get a lot more depth and that three-dimensional look and it really looks good. I am very pleased with how it looks. The way I put these shingles on is I have just a little bit of yellow wood glue and a little brush and I just brush onto the wood subroof where the shingles are going to go and I only want to get glue basically on the upper half of the shingle strip and then we'll take our shingle strip and on the the sheet paper here, as long as you work your way in from one single edge and you don't go back and forth, your joints will be staggered. So then I just line up the shingles on the left hand side, even with the eave of the roof, kind of stretch them and push them into place about every half inch or so. You can't stretch the whole strip because it won't stay straight and use a exacto knife to trim off the edge. I do notice as I get further along 
Um, I think the roof section picks up some moisture from the glue and does start to bow a little bit. But what I do is once I have all the shingles on, I just weight it down and then by the time it dries, it's flat again. I have both roof sections mostly shingled. I'll go ahead and glue them onto the structure and then I'll be able to finish the shingling and the ridge cap. All the roofing is put on, so all that's left is a ridge cap. Get it on somewhat straight. So we'll let that dry a while and then I will cut off the little overhanging piece. Still have to paint our smokestack and put it into place. And then do the f remainder of the trim work on the structure, around the corners mostly, corners and uh, eaves. The remaining trim pieces are all peel and stick. So we'll work on those now. I really like this peel and stick trim. The other thing I really like about this kit is how precise everything goes together. Alright, so that's the end. Now we gotta do this front and rear facing areas. Alrighty, just a few more detail items to take care of. We got our little smokestack we gotta put on top. Now there's already a pre-drilled hole but we just shingled right over and luckily I think I know where it's at. Okay, so I think that is too tall. Oh, I like that much better. It's not straight yet, but I like that height. We're just going to add a little super glue to it. Just a dab will do you. So we'll set this in. Now I just need to make sure that it's straight before the glue sets. I think that looks pretty good for now. We'll just let that set up for a little bit. The next thing we're going to work on is station signs. With the kit comes this sheet of pre-printed station signs. It's on a pretty heavy duty paper and they look great. I don't know where most of these places are and they don't have the places I need. So the manufacturer was nice enough to make up a few special signs just for me. I've already cut out some new ports. But on the kit itself, I just cut out Wolf Creek because it was the same size sign. You know, it fits on the, the freight house end just fine. But on this end, the office end, it, it covers the window if you try and fit it in there. And I don't like that. I mean, I don't know, maybe they mounted it to the, uh, the eaves. I don't know what they would have done. So what I think I'm going to do instead is I have cut out uh, some new ports already. I got my two here. I think what I'm going to do is uh, use these ones and just mount them as a signpost. Get a couple posts. And then maybe if I put a, any signs on here I can shrink down some... Uh, of the signs on a copy or maybe 75% or something or I might just not put any signs on but basically the structure here is done I think it looks amazing and I'll just make some station signs up and I'll use those on my layout I have a double track through Newport anyway and so the station signs on posts might look good sitting between the two tracks what I decided to do was I had some leftover peel and stick uh, from the trim. You can see it's, I pulled the backing off and I just stuck the signs onto that. On the plus side, I don't think my ruler is going to slip on me. What I'm going to do is, it's kind of an older blunter sharpie, is I'm just going to run along the edge. Oh, that looks like a proper sign. Make another one. I probably will put station signs on the building, or at least maybe the Great Northern logo or something like that. You know, on the depots in Newport, you know, they do have station signs on posts. 
um, but they also have signs mounted on the ends of the stations as well. So, Well folks, this structure is done. I have it placed on the layout in about the approximate place I'm going to eventually put it. I think it looks pretty good. Very happy with the way it turned out. Really enjoyed building it. And it is a welcome addition to my layout.